Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Technical Analysis Webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As always, keep in mind that there's risk involved with each trade that you take. Uh, no one trade is guaranteed to profit, so we want to manage risk in a way that makes sense in case the trade is unsuccessful. And we'll go through some ideas in that regard if we uh, find some trades that we want to simulate maybe that, that maybe look good on, on the charts. Uh, what you'll see is we have tools built into our web trader and our app that really make the risk management side of things quite a bit easier in terms of calculating exposure, potential profit, et cetera. Uh, and also keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now from our main website, uh, we can log into our web trader platform, which allows you to trade on both MT4 and MT5 accounts. And you'll find that there are a number of trading tools within our platform uh, that you don't find directly from the MetaTrader platform or app, uh, such as free signals, technical analysis breakdown of potential movements, news feeds, market buzz, etc. So there's a lot there for you to use uh, to assist you with your trading. And you'll also find all of those tools within our mobile app, which is found in the major app stores. Uh, and also there are links to those app stores here uh, to be able to download our app uh, to have the same functionalities and tools on the go. Now, if we log in here in the upper right, we'll be in the web trader. And, uh, you know, before we jump into the technical analysis, it, it makes sense uh, to consider what's happening fundamentally, uh, just a bit anyway, so you can have an idea of uh, which way you might feel the wind is blowing, so to speak, uh, with different instruments that, that you might be interested in trading on. Uh, in general, there was data out of the U.S. today, uh, which created a bit of volatility. Uh, the data was a little stronger than expected, meaning better than expected. Uh, but that kind of starts down the pathway then of if the economic news was better than expected, can we expect the U.S. to lower interest rates? Uh, one or two times still this year or at all. Uh, and, you know, that starts to create some fear on the markets that, hey, the, the data was strong enough and there's inflationary pressure still that uh, perhaps the interest rates can't come down as fast as some would like. Uh, so it's kind of a sticky situation where uh, good economic news can actually create a bit of fear and cause the markets maybe even to pull back some. And so I think we're, we're having a little bit of that happening right now. Uh, fundamentally, there's been some good news out of the Middle East, at least for now. Uh, there appears to be a truce uh, that's holding so far in the war between Israel and uh, Hezbollah up in Lebanon. And so uh, the regional fears maybe have subsided some. Uh, and maybe that takes pressure off of, uh, you know, the price movements on crude oil and, uh, you know, instruments that can be related to uh, those types of fears. And, you know, that could affect maybe the safe haven uh, instruments as well, like, like gold or the U.S. dollar. Uh, in particular, the U.S. dollar might be finding some strength from, from that data that came in earlier today that, that we just alluded to that was a bit better than expected. So with keeping that in mind, then we can start to take a look at some of the technical signals and see, you know, do we like those signals or not based on what we know about uh, is currently happening. And so if we look at something like Euro USD, typically we have a live signal on this currency pairing. So then we can bring up the signal and see, looks like a, a buy signal that already came to fruition. OK, so we see it was expected that the, the euro would climb. Uh, indeed, it did right into the take profit zone. These green lines are where res resistance was expected to be found. And we see that was the case. It hit the first take profit suggestion, pulled back, broke through, hit the second take profit suggestion and pulled back, bounced off the first one, acting as support now and came up and found resistance again. So this was a picture perfect signal uh, in that it not only went in the direction that it predicted, but it also found resistance at the resistance lines that were identified as your potential take profit marks, okay? So 
This buy signal, had you looked at it earlier today, worked out well. But now the question is, what's the next move? Because we know there was some data that might strengthen the USD today. And so this signal already climbed and came to uh, a positive result right into the take profit zone. So now we can start to look at larger candles and see what might happen next. And so if I pull these lines down, I can see that there's resistance here from last week. Okay, we're looking Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, last week, resistance here, a second time at that price and down. So it appears that the current movement has broken the first two resistance lines. It's kind of stuck below the second one, but it, it almost seems that it has a clear path up to this next price level up here. And so with reason for the USD to strengthen potentially, an opportunistic entry point, meaning if you wanted to short this now, a buy signal that already came to fruition, sometimes uh, you can look at it as an opportunity to go the opposite way from a technical perspective because it's reached the resistance level. And what we see is there's another resistance level up higher that could back you up if you were looking to short this, okay? Uh, from a technical perspective, it looks like it's still trying to uptrend. It has not really reversed into a downtrend yet. I can look maybe at the five minute candles and we see it, it, it has not started downtrending. We see it found resistance, came down, resistance a second time, came down and then broke through that resistance level here. That's a sign of an uptrend that wants to continue. The resistance level was broken, okay? And so this looks like it wants to keep climbing even past this take profit zone, even with the better than expected data out of the US today. And part of that could be uh, the optimism uh, surrounding the, the fact that the, the tensions in the Middle East maybe have died off a little bit. And so uh, the safe haven currencies like the USD maybe uh, are less attractive and the other currencies are able to climb. And so one thing I would look here is, you know, if you don't like the entry point because of the fact that it's already climbed so much, you could think about at this spot here, potentially going with the USD to eventually strengthen and pull this Euro movement back down. So let's, let's assume you don't wanna trade against the current uptrend which is showing as a technical uptrend still on the five minute candles, but maybe you do want uh, to sell, given the fact that maybe uh, the USD has reason to be stronger with that data that came in better than expected out of the US today on the economic calendar, okay? Multiple announcements, by the way, housing data, some other data that was stronger than expected. And so, uh, you sometimes find yourself in a situation where you think you wanna trade in one direction, but the entry point isn't where you want it to be. And so in that case, while this certainly could reverse and drop now, uh, maybe you're being more selective and you'll say, okay, I'll sell, but only I'll, I'll only execute if this reaches that next resistance level because it's already broken the resistance levels from the signal, okay? It looks like it, it, it broke through by, a number of pips, and maybe it wants to try and test the next resistance level, which is up above uh, 106, 106.11 or so. So if I wanted to sell, but only if it reached 106, let's say even, which is, if I want to draw a line here, one oh six even is right there. Okay, so just before the resistance, if it reaches, that's a sell at that spot is what we're looking at. And to get above the resistance, we need to be above 106.11, so maybe 106.15 as a stop loss. So execute when price hits, stop loss 106.15 to get above that next major resistance level and take profit if this is going to reverse and come back down with the strengthening US dollar, it certainly could pull back to where it was just earlier today 
And without having to break this support level here, you see this was resistance. So if this comes back down, it might have trouble breaking below this area of old resistance, which could act as support now at this point, because this was resistance once, twice, three times, and then broke above and found support right here on this wick when it came down and bounced. So this is a support level now. And if this does hit the price you want and drop, maybe it finds support around 105.33. So take profit uh, 105, let's say 35, just before that support level. So now we're looking at uh, better than three to one ratio, potential profit to possible loss. That's if we get the entry point we're looking for here to sell from. Again, why sell from here? Because it's a major resistance level. And there's fundamental news that says, hey, the USD probably won't weaken too much if we just had better than expected data out of the US. And the only reason maybe not to sell immediately with that news uh, is because we still have an uptrend going on the Euro USD. So then you look to find where's that next resistance level that maybe you think it won't break that level if indeed you're bullish on the US dollar, okay, for the US dollar to strengthen and maybe pull the Euro down. And so uh, now we've got our ratio set up, we've got our stop loss here, entry price just below 106, and take profit just above this support level here, okay? And the take profit is 105.35, which is right, about there okay just a hair above the support level and so now that the technical analysis has determined entry point and exit points for take profit and stop loss now we can adjust the trade size so that the amount of risk you're comfortable with if this is a move that you are going to choose to make and so i uh, maybe i want to risk one percent of my balance per trade maybe i want to risk two percent maybe i want to risk half a percent, but whatever that number is, now I can adjust the trade size to risk uh, the amount that I'm comfortable with on each trade. And so let's say I wanna risk near 1%, so it'd be about 600 on this current balance on my demonstration account. So uh, if I go to one lot, what's my risk? 150. So now I can go four lots and be exactly 600. So not 400 four lots and now I see I'm risking 600 to try and make 2600 okay it's better than four to one it's actually four and a third uh, to one in terms of possible profit uh, compared to possible loss okay and so I've got that order in and it looks like maybe this was a wise decision uh, not to sell from the market price because we see it's still pushing up and and you know, that's what many times when you do your technical analysis, if you zoom in on the smaller candles, you can identify an uptrend. And you see that this high point got higher than this one here. And so that showed a continued upward movement. Now it could reverse at any time, but this movement certainly is an uptrend on the smaller candles still. Uh, and so that helps you make your determination then not to do a market move maybe if you were looking to short this and maybe to wait until it reaches maybe a more significant resistance level like up here around 106.11, 106.10, okay? And so that's what we chose to do. We may or may not get in on this move if, if by chance it just starts to drop immediately, uh, but looks like maybe it has a good chance to climb up to that resistance level. Uh, and you know you don't have to decide that you also would want to sell on this, but from a technical perspective, that looks like a nice entry point if it does reach that next resistance level to take a shot at selling. Uh, and, and fundamentally, it feels like the fundamental news is a bit on our side if it does get that high to be able to short this pair. Uh, my only question is, does it reach it uh, in my mind? Okay, so uh, if you're not familiar with the platform, this area over here where it says orders, that's where your pending orders will be, okay? Your pending orders then, uh, if you minimize the chart a bit, you'll see listed and it tells you your trigger price. That's the price that if it hits, the trade will open, okay? And so that one's not opened yet, otherwise it would be in the position section, which we don't have any open trades as of yet. 
Okay, so uh, what else can we look at that might make sense with the news of the day? Maybe crude oil. You know, if there's decreased escalation or lower chance of escalation uh, in, in the Middle East, and so maybe that alleviates some fears about supply disruption for uh, a commodity like crude oil, then maybe there's reason for crude oil to drop right now, fundamentally speaking. Now we can take a look at what the signal is. It's to sell, and it already reached the first key level. So this is the second signal in a row that we're looking at, and because it's later in the day, they've already come to fruition and hit the take profit zone. So I, not every signal wins, but signals that have fundamental news helping them out have a better chance of winning. And so uh, we were already thinking maybe crude oil would be dropping before we even looked at the chart because of the fundamental news out of the Middle East. And indeed, there was a sell signal and it already dropped and hit the take profit. So that just shows you if you pay attention to the fundamental news, we knew since early in the morning that there was a truce uh, in the Middle East. And we all know the effect that could have potentially from a fundamental perspective on uh, crude oil prices. And so uh, it could have been easy to check the signal out earlier today and, and have acted on it already. Okay, so this sell signal already in the take profit zone. Now the question is, uh, would you wanna reverse like we did with the Euro USD and we said, okay, it already went up, maybe we'll sell on it even though it was a buy signal because it already came to the profit zone. I did that because the fundamental news tells me the USD might strengthen. Now with this case, the fundamental news is in the direction of the signal, meaning the fundamental news tells me crude oil could keep dropping. And so just because it's in the take profit zone doesn't mean in my mind that, that now I wanna buy on it to go in the opposite direction because I don't trust these support levels since the fundamental news is in the direction of maybe breaking these support levels the opposite situation of that euro usd that the fundamental news was in in uh, our favor to not break the resistance level up high and maybe to come back down okay and we see here it just broke these support levels that i drew from last week and it, it's it's an active downtrend on these two hour candles okay it just broke this support level here so uh what we're looking at is if we look at larger candles Crude oil looks like it could drop to this next price level down here, uh, which is a support level from uh, last week and, and even further back. So we see it tested this price level once, twice, three times, four times, and went back up. Okay, so this price looks like if it does continue to drop, maybe it has trouble breaking the 66.8, 67 type price level down here. But this is a one, one spot here that, that could slow it. And if we drag one of these lines down, we could see this was a support level back here. One, two, three, four, tested it once, five, six. You see it held six, seven, eight times here while it was trying to go up and down. So this looks like an important price level, intermediate price level. And if we follow it across, this was a spot where it got close and bounced here. And now here it comes towards this price. So uh, if you were shorting this, you might look at 67.8 or so as a spot where it could find support. But I think this looks like it has enough momentum. This could even break this little support level here and head towards the ma more major support level down here. Okay. So if, if I was trading on this, I, I would go with the trend on this, the opposite of the Euro USD trade, because the fundamental news is in the direction of this moving downward okay so if i'm selling on this i'm probably setting this up as a market move to do right now uh take profit down around 67 just above that support level uh stop loss back above this broken support right here so up above 65 68.58 so maybe up to 68.75 something like that just to get above that most recent broken support. Whoops, I put it on the wrong price level. 68.75, take profit, 67. Okay, so uh, take profit down here by around 67. We'll get rid of this line. 
Uh, stop loss back up above this broken support level right here at 68.75. Okay, so not risking nearly as much as the potential profit, better than three to one. And now we just need to adjust the trade size to risk the amount that you're comfortable risking. Maybe one and a quarter lots will get me there. Uh, almost 1.3. Okay, 1.4 gets me to about 1% of my balance risk. A little bit, little bit more than 1%, but pretty close to make over 3%. So now that move uh, is enacted. And I went kind of quick with that because it's dropping as we're speaking, as we're talking about it, uh, because the momentum is there. It just broke that support level and it seems to be trying to surge downward. What's driving this technical breakthrough of this support level? Again, crude oil prices were kind of buoyed up with the fears out of the Middle East. Each time there was a fear of escalation, crude oil was pushing up from that. Uh, and now that there's optimism, that there's a, uh, a truce uh, between Israel and Hezbollah uh, up in Lebanon, which maybe de-escalates the situation uh, regionally as well. Maybe there's less fear of uh, crude oil supply disruption out of the Middle East region. And so we see pressure coming off of uh, the crude oil price and, and a dropping uh, currently with pretty good momentum on crude oil. Okay, so two different situations. One where we take a market move uh, because the fundamentals are currently in the direction of the trend and one where we do a pending order because the movement was going in the opposite direction of the fundamentals. So you're waiting for maybe a better price, uh, maybe a more sturdy looking, uh, in this case, resistance level for the Euro USD enter entry to potentially short it, okay? Now, if you were thinking the opposite direction, on these instruments, then it might be the flip opposite. You might be doing a pending order on crude oil, hoping to get a lower point to buy from, uh, and, and you might be doing uh, a market buy on the Euro USD. But uh, I'm interpreting the fundamental news that maybe there's some reason for the USD to strengthen uh, and for crude oil to drop. And so those are the directions that we situated the technical setups then uh, to trade. And so, the basic process that I'm going through here with you then in this session is to help you understand that many times the technical analysis is made uh, more successful in terms of picking and choosing entry points and exit points if you also pay attention to what's happening with the fundamental news. You can catch the momentum uh, of the current uh, trend a bit better and anticipate reversals even if you understand maybe the most recent fundamental news behind the movements that are occurring, okay? So uh, technical analysis in and of itself uh, is a strong tool to use. You pair that with the fundamental news of the day as well, uh, and that really can help you be just that much more successful uh, with your trading. Let me pause for a moment. Any questions, comments, before maybe we look at one more instrument? Okay, I don't see any questions popping up. Uh, I'll go ahead and pull up maybe a major index. If we look at the US 500, we can see there's been quite a bit of rising and then a pullback uh, since earlier today. So it reached a resistance level here. And if we maybe put this on one day candles will get a better perspective. Okay, so this resistance level is the all time high. And so it just hit there today, testing the all time high. And there were a lot of investors with their sell stops ready to go at the all time high. And when it got up there, it came straight down earlier today. Okay, so not enough momentum to break the all-time high right now. And part of the fear on the equities right now is that data out of the US, it was stronger than expected. And now there's probably less likelihood of aggressive rate cuts in the near future. 
okay? Uh, the U.S. was trying to lower interest rates back down uh, to help out the economy, but they don't want inflation to come rushing back either. And so the better the economy looks like it's doing, the less in a hurry the feds are in the U.S. to lower interest rates any further uh, because they fear that inflation could come back if they make uh, those rates too low too fast. And so this, this is a, a, a pretty solid channel way here where it was uptrending for really months on these one day candles where it kept finding the top and bottom of this channel. Very predictable movement up and down. We didn't reach the top of the channel yet, so it, it's due for a breakthrough eventually to make its way to the top of this channel again. But it looks like for now, the strength of the USD on today's data is downtrending this towards the next support level down, which could be right about there as I see it on the one day candles. We see there's support here and here, and then also here and here on the one day candles. So this looks like it could continue to fall to 59.78, somewhere in that range. So now if we go back to say four hour candles, that's this line here. This is the one I drew on the one day candles, 59.78. So let's get rid of some of these others, not to confuse ourselves. If I was looking for a spot to buy right now on US 500, it wouldn't be a market move from a technical perspective. This is a strong downtrend right now on the four hour candles. It looks like this could push down to, to at least the first major support level, which on the one day candles was right here. This is the line we drew that we saw going back on the one day candles where we saw some major support. So if it gets near 59.78, I would say even uh, 59.90, somewhere in this range here, I might look then uh, to buy off of that support level. But currently, it looks like this has enough pressure that it could continue to drop uh, for a bit more. So if you're looking for a market move, we can look at the five minute candles and we can see a strong downtrend. Okay, there's that classic channel way, this time down on the smaller candles. The bigger candles, this is part of a much larger uptrend but this is a pullback in that uptrend. And right now the USD is strengthening. A uh, bit of fear about maybe interest rates won't be lowered as quickly, which it tends to affect the equities the most. And so we see the result. And so maybe you're looking at a spot, if you wanna short this, you'd be looking at a spot uh, where you think this would find resistance. And you see right here is a support level, okay? Support, 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 it bounced. Then once it broke below that price, it had resistance and came down further. So right now it's testing this little spot here. Now we're looking at five minute candles, right? So these are small movements. This could try to climb to the next resistance level, which is here, okay? It was a support here, it broke below and became resistance on the five minute candles, okay? So, uh, it's up to each individual trader. If you wanna sell with this downtrend, which it is absolutely an active downtrend on the smaller candles, the fundamental news seems to be in favor of the downtrend, so that's got the wind at your back. The question is entry point. Do you wanna try and short it from this first resistance level? And if I did, I probably would put my stop loss above one, two resistance levels. That way, if it breaks above both of those resistance levels and hits my stop loss, say, up here at 16.21, then I know it's a reversal of the downtrend because it broke one, two resistance levels to hit my stop loss. Then okay, I might, might say, all right, this reversed, I'll give up on that. And you can see over here, this is a, a, a support level that looks pretty strong, okay? That was a support level. So if this reverses and goes up above that level, then I might say, you know what, that's an uptrend now. I don't wanna risk any more than that if I'm selling on this right now. Because if, if there really is a sell-off starting to occur, it, it probably shouldn't go up above one, two resistance levels and hit my price up here at 60.25. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll sell with the current downtrend. 
okay i i'll put my stop loss up here at 6025 if it goes that far then then the downtrend ended from a technical perspective and that's enough reason for me to get out on the trade and take a small loss if i take profit I need to look at larger candles and see how far did I think that could drop. Remember, we drew this line down here at 59.78. So maybe 59.80, or you could say uh, 85, somewhere in that range. So if I say 59.80 for my take profit, looks like about double potential profit, a little less than that compared to risk. It's a short-term trade. It's not a it's not a long distance that we're looking at here. So uh, then I start to to put different trade sizes to see how much to, am I going to risk here for this move. I need to go a little smaller if I want to be at my one percent risk. Okay, right around six hundred is what I'm shooting for. So that's about six hundred. Okay, about one percent risk on my account to make about one and a half percent. So I make the move and I sell. Uh, that's with the current downtrend on the short-term candles, five-minute candles, <clears throat> excuse me, in the direction that the fundamental news says this probably should move because of the stronger than expected data out of the U.S., maybe creating some fears of less rate cuts to come, okay, which, as I alluded to before, has created somewhat of a negative effect on the equities each time there's been stronger than expected data and fears of less rate cuts out of the US. Let me pause, any questions, comments before we end things in this session? Okay, I must have been clear. Uh, what I see here then, this is our setup. This is the first resistance level, second resistance level, our stop loss is right up here. Active downtrend, take profit is right here. Support level is here. So short-term move, as long as it doesn't break above two resistance levels, uh, then we're looking at a winner here, going with the current trend. We'll see how that works out. Uh, hopefully the trend continues the same. Uh, thank you for joining. The, the next session I'll be doing is tomorrow, uh, earlier in the day, 11 a.m. UK time. If you can make it, great. If not, all of our sessions are recorded and you can find them on our YouTube channel. All right, good luck with you trading the rest of the evening and the rest of the week. Bye for now.